Victor's Assembly Church is located along River Road at former Casino Cinema near Kenya Uniform Distributors. To give you offering, send through our in-person number 0722 712 -918. Somebody celebrate him as you have your seat Hallelujah. in the presence of God. As you have your seat in his presence, he deserves all the glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. Let's read the word of God together. The glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the one that is a standard lifter, the changer of the standard is the Spirit of God. And the Bible is saying that we are changed from glory to glory by the Spirit of God. I want us to agree today that we must get to our next level of glory. Lift your voice and say, I must get to my next level of glory. There is nowhere the Bible says you shall move from glory to demotion, from glory to shame, from glory to disgrace. It is from gl glory to glory. So tell your neighbor for me, you are moving from glory to a higher glory. Say to yourself now, I am moving from this level of glory to a higher level of glory. Isaiah 57 and verse 14. Isaiah 57 verse 14. So that I'm balanced. I am OT and I'm, an, I'm, I'm NT. I want to be very religiously correct. Amen. Are we there? Let's read the word of God together. And they shall say. Give me the ASV version. The American Standard Version. I like what it says. Uh, give me an IV. There is one I'm looking for that says build up, build up. Oh yeah, that's the one. Can we read it together? And it will be said, build up, build up. Prepare the road. Remove the obstacles out of the way of my people. That is your testimony. Amen. There is a building up that is happening now. It is a build up and another build up. It is from glory to another glory. Every obstacle must give way in this service. I know you have been hindered before and I know even right now you are counting your cheeks, you are counting your projects and you are saying there is no way I can finish because it's already mid-November and December is coming. But I want you to know that by the Spirit of God there is a building up. As we look into the mirror and behold the glory of Jesus, there is going to be a level and a dimension of glory. What you need is not more time. It is more glory. What you need is not more time. It is an obstacle to be removed out of the way. I came to declare to somebody, you are encountering glory in this service. You are encountering glory in this service. You are encountering glory in this service. The glory that makes you build up and go to the next level, it is locating you in this service. Not because I say so, but because the word of God says, and it will be said, it will be said, it will be said, it will be said. In your village, they will say, in your family, they will say, in your company, it will be said, prepare the road, prepare the house, prepare the documents, prepare their trouble, prepare whatever they need. And not only that, remove every obstacle, remove every obstacle. I came to declare obstacles are giving way, mountains are giving way, hindrances are giving way. Lift up your heads, O oh ye gates. Lift up your heads, O oh ye everlasting door. Because the King of Glory, the King of Glory, the King of Glory must visit somebody today. Must visit somebody today. Must visit somebody today. I came to declare what you could not finish in eight months, what you could not finish in ten months. In the next 10 days, in the next 10 days, in the next 10 days, after the glory encounter, you are finishing, you are finishing, you are finishing, you are finishing. 
Saudis, Saudis, lift your voice and say from glory to glory. Lift your voice and say every obstacle. You must give way for me now. Take your seat. It's not a matter of time. It is a matter of glory encounter. What you need is not more time. All you need is have an encounter with the glory of God and the spirit of God. And suddenly every obstacle shall give way. Give me Isaiah 61 and verse 1. So that we understand that it is not by how much you work. It is not by how much you try. You need a spiritual encounter for things to begin to move. Let's read the word of God. The spirit, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and opening of the prison to them that are bound. Who is coming upon you? the spirit of the Lord, what will be the product of him coming upon you is that number one, they will, you will begin to have a different message. You will begin to preach, look what the Lord has done. Good tidings will locate your mouth. Good tidings will locate your family. Good tidings will locate this church. In the next time we are having testimonies, we will not be struggling for two. We will be struggling for 20 because God is changing what you say. Tell your neighbor, God is changing what you say. Oh, I came to declare a song is entering your mouth. A message is entering your mouth. Because when the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, your language must change. What you say must change. You begin to talk of good tidings. Hey, good tidings. And he says, not only good tidings, but he has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. When the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you cannot be broken hearted. Hey, tell it about the reason why you're broken hearted is because you've not had an encounter with the spirit of God but today but today you are receiving a fresh baptism even if they don't hear you give them a pat on the shoulder and tell them you are receiving that baptism because you came you cannot have the spirit of God and be broken hearted those are two things that don't work together and then to proclaim liberty to the captives. It means there is a form of liberation that comes upon you when the spirit of the Lord comes upon you. Those that are born again and those that are born of God, they have been set free from the law of sin and death. Liberty is your new status as long as you are born again. But is everybody experiencing freedom? No. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has not been allowed to work within us that he may bring liberation. And it's saying that and the opening of prison to those that are bound. Deliverance is possible. Huh? Deliverance is? And you do not need time to be delivered. You only need an encounter with the glory and the spirit of God. Tell your neighbor for me, you don't need more time. You need an encounter with the spirit of God. Because there are some of us that have been postponing the day of our release. Because we think that spiritual things take time. They don't take time. They take faith. And they take encounters with the spirit of God. As long as you are having an encounter with the spirit of God, a day in his presence can cover a thousand years. You don't need more time. 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 You have been waiting and now you are 45. How long do you think you need to wait? If you have been waiting, waiting then for years is not the formula. You need a spiritual encounter. And the Lord is willing to give it to you. The Lord is willing to give it to you. If you hunger, you shall receive. If you are thirsty, you shall be fed. Because that is what he says in his word. So, the opening of prison. It means that there are people that are walking, but they are in prison houses. Hmm? They are walking and they look free. But they are living in prison houses. But when the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, bondage must give way. Bondage must give way. But there is a qualification that you must be meek. You must be humble. To be meek is to be teachable. To be meek is to be submitted. I want you to lift your voice and tell the Holy Spirit, I need you in my life. I humble myself, Holy Spirit. Have your way in my life right now. Have your way in my life right now. 
Let there be good tidings in my mouth. Let there, my heart, broken heart be, be bound. And let there be liberty for me. An opening of prison in every bondage. Work with the Holy Spirit. Work with the Holy Spirit. Work with the Holy Spirit. Just invite the Holy Spirit to work it out with you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name do we pray. Amen. And my topic right now that I want to deal with is dealing with anti-finishing forces. And in this week of Thanksgiving, it is very relevant because one of the key things that God requires of us is to be grateful before we receive what we want to receive. The sacrifice of Thanksgiving is most applicable when before the miracle happens. And more so even after the miracle happens, it is automatic that when you receive something good, you say thank you. But saying thank you before God does it is an expression of faith that you are too faithful to fail me. And in this week of thanksgiving, we are not going to give him thanks for what he has done. We are also going to give him thanks for what he is yet to do. Oh, for what he is yet to do. We will still need him in 2023. We will give him thanks in advance for what he has in store for us. For 2023 for i know the plans that i have for you for 2023 says the lord plans of good and not of evil to give you a future and an expected end so as we bring ourselves this week we will be telling god i know you have a master plan and the plan is good for me it is good for my family it's good for my children it's good for vac it's good for what i am about to do and for that reason i give you thanks in advance Oh my God, do I have people here that know that God has good plans for you? Are you sure you know that? Are you sure? Upstairs, do you know God has good plans for you? It is not a feeling. It is an assurance. It is documented in the word of God. I know the plans that I have for you. Ooh. And all these things, I know they are working together for my good. That is what he has said. Because he is good and his mercies endure forever. But uh, they are what we call anti-finishing forces. Or what we call anti-progress. You can even say anti-progress. Or anti-accomplishment. It means they fight accomplishment. They fight progress. They fight finishing. And I want to put it across. That there is nobody who starts a project with a name to stop in the middle. There is nobody who gets into a marriage at the backside of their mind. They are saying, I want divorce. There are few, yes. But very many people that I know that once they get into marriage, they want to see it to the end. There is nobody who gives birth to a child with an aim to bury them before them. Nobody gets into school thinking that they will drop because of pregnancy midway. There is nobody who gets to build a house and then they have an agenda that by the time the house reaches the rental, funds will finish and they will, not fi they will not complete the house. There is nobody who gets into a field and they are farming and they have already made arrangements that I know in the sixth month, pests will come and destroy everything. Those are what we are calling anti-finishing forces. There is nobody who gets born again at the back of their mind thinking that when I reach a teenager, I am going to backslide. Then I slide back when I am 40. There is nobody who puts their, 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 their jebel or their hole to the ground. And then midway, before they finish the project, they say, I'm bored. Nobody gets into ministry to fail. Hey. When you joined the department, you joined in. You did not join so that you can come out and become a burden. No. Everybody has a good plan for their lives. Nobody applies for a good job and then imagines in the sixth month, I am going to be fired and I'm okay with it. <laughs> Nobody plans for that. But do those things happen to us? Yes. We are going to see what we can do to make sure that the plan he has for us, that is for good and not for evil, shall be accomplished. And the powers that fight us in between will be under our feet. 
we have a job to do in this service. And we must finish it by the time we say the grace. So what are the seven things that can happen to your project so that you do not finish? Number one, weariness due to opposition. Many have failed to complete their projects, failed to complete their degrees, failed to graduate, failed to see it through marriage because there was weariness because of opposition. There is physical opposition and there is spiritual opposition. Were it not that God has kept us strong, weariness would have stopped us a long time ago. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 40 that even the lion, even the, 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 the young lions, they even, you know, they get, it's actually the book of Psalms, that the, the lion, young lions, they lack. But they that wait upon the Lord shall lack no good thing. But he said that they that wait upon the Lord in Isaiah 50 shall renew their strength. They will mount up on wings as eagles. Because most of the times when we fight or wait for something for too long, as human beings, we get weary. So even as we talk here, there are people that did not finish their project. Not because the project is not viable or the project is not important. They got weary in the middle. But I came to declare... The spirit of weariness shall not oppress you anymore. By the spirit of the Lord, let the spirit of weariness melt like wax in the name of Jesus. If you are in agreement, shall the spirit of weariness shall not oppress me anymore. I declare freedom in the name of Jesus. Kuna watu wanaisi kwa ndoa anakatu anasema nimeboeka. Hii ndoa nimepigania madaini low, sisaini low, ex in low. I have fought now. I am tired. I will not fight anymore. This message is for you. The Bible says he gives strength to the weary. He renews your strength. May the Lord renew your strength to fight again. To fight again. To fight again. The day remaining is not the day of fighting. It is the day of testimony. The day that is ahead of you is the day of finishing what you have started. Because the Lord shall make it come to pass. Number two reason why people do not finish is because helpers disappear midway. Helpers disappear midway. Those people that were supposed to help you, they disappear midway. One of the key things I've seen the devil do is he uses rumors. Wanaskia story yako, a rumor that you did this and this. And through that rumor, somebody that had decided they will see you all the way, they fail to fulfill their promise. There could be many other things that help us go midway. Some of them who are helping you, they are also attacked that they may stop helping you. In my days of deliverance, I've had people say, the reverend, anybody who tries to help me, they are attacked on my behalf. When you see that there is a strong man that is standing at the gate of your finishing and he has vowed you will never finish. So if they realize you are more determined than their determination, they attack the people that are helping you so that your project may stop. Lift up your voice and say, every strong man assigned against my helpers to stall my projects. Hear the word of the Lord. Whatever I have begun, I shall finish. Your time is up. I bind you. I paralyze you. Lose my helpers. In the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and celebrate their deliverance. Your helpers will not faint until your project is over. Those who are assigned to make you cross over to the other side. They will not die prematurely. You shall see it to the end in the name of Jesus. After Moses died, there was a Joshua. Helpers will be like Karile. One will be giving a baton to the next one. You will never be helpless. You will never be helpless. Can I prophesy? You will never be helpless. It is from one level of glory to the next level of glory. Touch somebody and tell them you are my next helper. And after me, there will be another one. You will never be helpless. Lift up their hand and say, from glory to glory is your portion. Don't worry about the helper that has gone. Another one is waiting in the queue. 
another one is waiting in the queue huyu akiondoka mwingine anaingia huyu akienda mwingine anaingia you will never be helpless i declare in the name of jesus let there be a raising of a standard god will give you stronger helpers than the ones you have had ah uh-uh, you didn't hear me mungu anakupatia wasaidizi wako juu ya wale wamekusaidia kama huyo amewezwa na vita ya shilingi mbili Mungu atakuletea wa shilingi kumi. Ah, ah, but by all means by all means you will not be helpless lift your voice and say who is helpless and I'm not helpless I can't hear you ha sound like you believe it who is helpless and I'm not helpless lift your prophetic finger and say oh my helpers who are under demonic attack i declare your freedom in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray for your helpers your wife is your helper your husband is your helper your pastor is your helper hey hey sarama namahe raba zobeke totabi In Jesus name do we pray. When one door closes, another one must open. I want you to shake your head and say I can never be helpless. I am too anointed to be helpless. Ooh. Are you sure you believe what you are saying? Sit on the enemies of your destiny. They will not stop you. After one well was dry, the Lord will always make sure there is another well for Isaac to dig. After he dug the next one, he gave him Rehoboth. The issue is, the enemy wants you to stop trying, but you cannot stop. Tell yourself, I cannot stop. stop. There there is no turning back. Where you have come from, it (laughs) it is more far to go back where you have come from than what is remaining. Because the Bible says that the, the path of the just, give me Proverbs, we read 4, 18, 23. Proverbs 4, from 18 to 23. We read that so that you understand what I'm saying. By the path of the just. Okay, one to go. By the path. Okay, the path of the just is as what? So, as long as you are just, and a just person is a righteous person, justified. As long as the just is walking on that path, there is a shining light. You cannot walk in darkness. That shineth more and more. Not less and less. Not dim and dim. It is? I can't hear you. And to what? The perfect day is the day of graduation. The perfect day is the day of house dedication. The perfect day is the day when we will wed you here. The perfect day is the day you will stand before God and be told you are a winner. The perfect day is the day your enemies will say your God is more powerful than our God. That perfect day is the day your child will graduate out of school. And all your haters have said your children will not finish. They will be surrounding and you will say look what the Lord has done. Your perfect day is coming. Your path is only permitted to shine more and more. Ah! This church cannot go down. We can only become more and more. Because that is what the Bible says. We are meant to be above only and not beneath. Bottom power is not your power. Ah! You shall be above and not below. Marakaka. Even the government is saying bottom up. Everybody in the bottom must go up. But the goodness about the righteous is as if you go up. You can only go up, up. Yeah. It is from first floor to second floor, to third floor, to fourth floor, to five floor, sixth floor. You cannot go down. It is impossible. As long as you are a righteous man, it is only you that has permitted the devil to take you down. But today we are getting back our light. Today we are getting back our progress. Today we are getting back our testimonies. By Sunday you must have a testimony. Ah! I can't hear you. Tell your neighbor it does not take time. It takes light and glory. Have you seen? Stop giving excuses that you are too young. Nobody is too young to make it. 
Josiah was a king at the age of eight. Nobody is too young to be enthroned. Amen. You are too old and too late for your enthronement. I came to declare acceleration by the glory. I came to declare acceleration by the light. Some of us started succeeding at the age of 22. Our children shall begin at the age of 13. Ah, if you are in agreement, shout it. Yes. Every excuse the enemy has presented to us to make us remain at that one level. We declare we are saying no. The path of the just is as a shining light. You must shine. You must shine. Unapologetically, you shall shine. Lift your voice and say, every darkness covering my star. Any darkness covering my projects. Hear the word of the Lord. Let darkness be overcome by your light. In the name of Jesus. Let darkness be overcome by the light of God. You will finish that house. You will finish that dissertation. You will finish that project. You don't need time. You need glory. Ah, if you are in agreement, shout the loudest, amen. amen. Those who are standing, tell the neighbor standing next to you, you don't need more time. Need you more. need the glory of God to shine upon you. You, you must make it to the next level. The next tell them you must make it. You must. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. You must hear. Tell your neighbor, you cannot be a failure. Now that you are in Christ Jesus. You cannot fail. Hey, 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 hey. Our children who are sitting on their exams, you are not permitted to fail. The light of God is upon you. When you reach the finishing line, you will not be saying, told for it. You will be told, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. And what I say to one, I say to well. Amen. Tell your neighbor for me as you sit down, well done. Those who are seated, tell yourself, well done. That is the word you want to hear. See your poor son, I'm a bakisha ya nyani na marigo. Not you. That I'm a bakisha ya mboga na mandizi. No, we refuse. Nobody will try to comfort you with effort. At least you tried. We must make it to the finishing line. That is why the crown is for finishers. Shout again, I am a finisher. The Bible says in Isaiah, in, in, in Psalm 65, 11, that he crowned the year with his bounty, with his goodness. There is a God who believes in crowning. Hmm? Thou crowned the year with thy goodness and thy paths drop with fatness. We already saw in the one path, there is light. Now we have seen, there is another path where there is fatness. The path of the just is a shining light. But now thou crownest the ear with thy goodness. When his goodness is upon you, which is another name for glory, light is also part of glory. When you see, because Moses was told that my goodness will pass by you. But what did Moses ask for? Show me your glory. All the things we are saying, you need an encounter with the glory of God in order to enter that path that has light and has fat fatness that you may finish. I'll say number one. Number one, what hinders us from finishing? Weariness. Number two, before their time. Number three, limitation or exhaustion of resources. Limitation or exhaustion of resources. It can be human resource. Where you have a job, but you have nobody qualified for the job. There was a crisis, such a crisis in heaven. And they were saying, who shall go for us? We need to send somebody to come and deliver man who shall go for us. But in heaven, Jesus said, I will go. If heaven never lacked, you will never lack resources. There can be, uh, you know, natural resources you want to build, but there is no timber that is available. Uh, but you remember when they were building the temple of Solomon, they went and timber came from abroad. There are resources that you need for your project. It doesn't matter whether they shall be for export or they shall be manufactured. But there are resources for you. 
There are resources for you. There are resources for you. Even if the price of cement and the price of, of steel goes higher, there are resources available for you. Because God knows how to upgrade your income based on the economy. Hey, God is an economist. He that created economists cannot fail to make adjustments for you when economies go high. Uh -uh. You didn't hear me. I, I, I can sense a spirit of doubt and belief. And unbelief. How can this be? My salary is still 10,000. But Unga is still rising higher and higher. The problem is that you look at the price and you forget to look at the source. That same God who gave you a salary of 10,000 has 100,000 somewhere. Amen. You only need to connect with him by faith. So the enemy makes sure that there are limitation of resources, which are maybe financial resources, human resources, all natural resources, all kind of resource you need. Number four, the fading of the zeal to accomplish the project. The fading of zeal or the fading of the desire. The drive is no longer there. Mulianza na moto, mumefifia, na muiri kwa nini. Have you seen people who begin with zeal? Hmm? Zeal. Ananza, you will think they will save the whole world. But midway, wanakuwa baridi more than the refrigerator. It is an anti-finishing power that arrests them. People when they are saying, Jesus, I'm coming. Whatever you send me, I'll be there, God. But the only 12 were left behind because others, the desire and the zeal disappeared. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says that to continue rekindling your zeal, your determination. Because for your zeal and desire to go down, there must have been a conversation with the enemy of your progress. Nobody with us or nobody stops to do what they are supposed to do until they hear a contrary word mm -hmm. are we communicating nobody gets discouraged until they hear something nehemiah is a case example of somebody that he was so zealous until he resigned from his job and he said i am not going to do this job anymore what i'm going to do is that i am going to rebuild the wall because i want to see the glory of god Oh, the pride of Israel restored. And he went. But when he went, the people joined him. But midway, hmm, there were guys, Sanbarat, Tobias, and they were telling him, you cannot build this wall. But there is one thing about Nehemiah. He said, we will not stop the work to listen to you. We will not stop the work to listen to you. Many people get weary in the middle. And many people stop what they are doing because they have allowed the enemy to kill their zeal, to kill their conviction. That's why there is a song we, are, we normally sing in Kikuyu. Nobody fades or, do, or goes down in zeal or desire until they listen to the enemy. The enemy will tell you, especially when you are serving God, you are doing too much, you are being used. Mm. When will you ever build your home? People think you are foolish. Eh. When you are so dedicated to your wife, men will come and tell you, chapati. So what is the enemy trying to do? To create an opinion that will kill your zeal. When you, you are dedicated to a cause and you are working so hard in your company, they tell you you are trying to impress the boss. When you are a student and you are always going to ask your teacher, show me what I need to do, they tell you, mm -hmm, stopi. The people will always be used by the enemy to make sure that he kills the zeal. And after they finish the assignment, they will never remember they told you that. Because the enemy wants you to lose your zeal because your zeal is a fuel for the project. Hey. 
That's why the Bible says that do not let your hands faint. Do not let your knees become feeble. Because it is us who allow the enemy to attack our desire. Any good thing you wanted and the enemy killed the desire, let there be resurrection in this service. Let there be resurrection in this service. That car that you have always to desire to buy is a good thing. Don't let the enemy kill the desire because you are jobless. That desire to get married is a good thing. But I know the enemy can tell you there are no men anywhere. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Let your zeal and your desire be rekindled in the presence of our God. The enemy is telling you that you want to build a big home. He now tells you, no, even a bungalow is enough. Oh, not even a bungalow, even you can do a Mabati house. Whereas you are building, you are only 35 and you are building a Mabati house. By the time you reach 40, that house will not be your level. You will be wondering what was in my head. Because what you need for your future, God has already planted it, it, it in you. But the enemy slowly but slowly has been talking you out of it. We refuse to go for less than what God has said. We refuse to bargain less than what God has in store for us. I know the plans I have for you. They are not of evil, but they are good. They are good. They are good. They are good. God is a high planner. He has high plans for you. God has no seat for you in the valley. Tell your neighbor, God has no vacancy for you in the valley. Tell your neighbor, God has no bed for you in Kenyatta Hospital. Oh, don't prepare for a bad day. Prepare for your enthronement. The only thing I know, he crowned my ear. There is a throne for somebody in their service. Are you looking at a throne or you are looking at a hospital bed? Are you looking for a throne or you are looking at a jail term? I decide to look unto Jesus, who is the owner and the finisher of my faith. And for the joy, for the joy, for the joy that was set before him, he despised the closer. It is time to despise your tri trials. It is time to despise what you're facing because it is only for a moment. Weeping may endure for a moment. Weeping may endure for a moment. Wataongea kwa siku chache na waache. Wataongea na watachoka. Wanasemanga wanaongea lakini usiku watalala. Don't listen to noise makers. Don't listen to naysayers. Don't let them kill your zeal. Don't let them kill your desire. I can hear you. Tell your neighbor for me, don't allow them. Don't allow them. Don't allow them. Tell them, don't allow them. Tell them, tell my neighbor for, for me. The reason why you abandoned that project is because you listened to your enemies. It is not because God was not powerful. The reason why you are not believing God anymore, it is not because God is not believable. It is because you listen to the enemy. Take a minute and erase every nonsense you've heard from the devil. He has told you you can't do it. He has told you your time has passed. He has told you people like you can't make it. Erase that nonsense from the devil. Erase it, erase it, erase it, erase it. Ah, erase it, erase it, erase it, erase it. Erase it, erase it, erase it. Only you can do that. Lift your hands and say, anything the enemy has said cannot be done. Say it from your spirit, man. Anything the enemy has told me, it cannot be done. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take back the power. I shall finish what I started. Openly declare, I shall finish what I started. The Bible says when they receive the word, they acted on it. The beauty of praying when the word is going on is that you are actioning the word right then. Don't postpone it that I will go home and pray. Pray now that there is a move of God. Pray now that there is a move of God. Pray now that there is a move of God. Pray now that there is a move of God. Pray now that there is a move of God. I want you to open and declare I shall finish what I started. Shout it seven times. One. Everybody stand up on your feet and say that. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, and give praise to Jesus. Hey. Hey. I wish you shouted more and more and more and more and more. Jesus. 
Jesus name do we sit on our enemies Uwe yote amekwambia you are building kitu haiwezi malizika ignore them When we bought the land of Rehoboth the first delegation we received is delegation of commercial property owners and I remember even the bank where we went to get our mortgage they asked me reverend are you sure you are okay how can you take a commercial property and build for a church that does not bring profit if I were you I would sm be smart enough and make it a profitable project then we can build the altar later and I knew I had the devil speaking. I told him that which you despise is what we are thinking it for. Even God cannot have allergy for sitting on a 50 million plot. Ay, 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 ah, ah. Ah, they will tell you your project cannot be done. They will tell you your project, your children cannot finish school because you are jobless. But the God of Jacinta who has commanded the principal to say your child shall go free for education. That same God is our God. Your children shall finish their education. Children are bigger than education. He gave you what you cannot give yourself. You shall finish by fire by force. I can hear you. I can hear you. I am coming to dedicate your house. You are jobless right now. But God is not using your job. He is using his resources. I feel a spirit of boldness to declare to you that what you need is not more money. What you need is more glory. What you need is more light. Let the light of God shine upon your path. Let the light of God shine upon your path. See all azima ununuendi o pate. Bibida inasema joni mununue bila pesa. Kuna utajiri ameficha chini ya aldi. Hakuna mutu anajua. And I tell you, as you sit down, go beyond what you see. See, the yetu ni macho. Macho yetu ikiona tu karibu. We will become lazy and lack the desire and the drive to move on. I trust you are encouraged right now. Number five, because there are destructive forces that have invaded our projects. Destructive forces that invade projects like violence. That the enemy can sponsor violence in a man that he becomes violent to the wife of his youth. And after he is done, he will be saying, I don't know what God over me. And then the violence will destroy the home. Not because God wanted the home to break, but there are destructive forces that have come. Infidelity can invade a home. Sickness can invade a person. They destroy all the finances. And I've seen in most families that the enemy will not attack when you have strength. He waits for the latter years after the man has worked so tirelessly. Then the devil brings a kidney problem. The kidney problem takes away all the resources. That there is nothing to be inherited. That is why even as you prosper, never allow your zeal for God to go down. The same power that loaded you with benefits is the same power that will protect you. Foolish people serve God when they are broke. But when they are rich, they, st they stop serving him. They do not understand it is the rich man that needs police more than the poor. The poor fear the police. The rich tip the police. You didn't get it. You don't get it. You don't get it. Yeah. Hi, yeah, yeah. The, the poor fear the police. When they hear the police, they say, ah, they are always careful if they have ID. But the rich are not careful. Because the Bible says that wealth is a defense. Don't depend on the defense of money. Money fails. Cars fail. Properties fail. But trust in the Lord. The God that was with you when you had nothing. Never abandon him when he has given you everything. Only foolish people stone the police officers when they see them guarding their territory. Any wise person, the richer you become, the more you need a man of God. Hey. But the poor are the ones who criticize. And I'm not talking about poor money wise, the poor in spirit. They criticize men of God. When I come to your house, you are thinking I need money. When you see a man of God near you, you think they are, they are, they are imagining things. Of course not in this house. Maybe those that are hearing me. When you see a man of God, you imagine they have other benefits other than their mandate. Let me tell you for a fact that anybody that wants to make it in life must have God at the center of their lives. And God is, has his representatives. 
Just like the government has chiefs and sub-chiefs, heaven has prophets, apostles, teachers, evangelists, and pastors. They are the custodians of his power. What they say comes to pass. What they say comes to pass. Do not allow destructive forces to destroy you. Because the enemy knows that when the hedge is broken, the serpent will bite. When the hedge over a business is removed, fire consumes it overnight. Don't you remember? Satan went and said, remove the hedge over Job. And suddenly there was fire. There was death. There was hatred. There was sickness. I pray that the hedge over your life shall not be removed. I pray that the hedge over your life shall not be removed. Yeah. Nobody has a hedge by coincidence. You must make your hedge and make it work. That's why every time Israel would go to battle, they would say, is there a man of God here that you may consult them? Why were they consulting? Because they know men of God are hedges. Being in a fellowship like this one, the corporate fellowship is a hedge. Because when one falls, another one will lift them up. Oh my God. Open your heart to be cared for. When people ask you, why didn't you come to church? Stop insulting them. How is it your business? They are only your hedge. Two are better than they are only doing the job of a believer that because two are better than one tell your neighbor if I don't see you next Sunday I have a responsibility to hedge you what do you call them the back, the back nobody is able to shave themselves at the back so it is my business if you don't come so if I ask you don't tell me how is it my business it is because when you are standing I am standing hey that's what the Bible says, do not forsake the coming together as is a habit of some. Kuna watu wanatabia mbaya ya kukosa kanisani na wakikosa ndiyo kidole. Kidole kama haiko, hatutaweza kuchuna vitu vizuri. Kama jicho mwata haiko, tutakuwa mono aida. So it is not you we are looking for. We are looking for our missing partner. Ah! Can I get an amen here? Tell your neighbor if you don't come. I will look for you because you may be the intestines and I need to eat. Ama ni ukweli. Si ni ukweli. Ama wewe ndiyo nyuele ni naonekana kiparangoto. Lazima ni kutafute maana tukiwa pamoja jeshi haita tuweza. Amia tinani yako wacha tabia ya kumaliza hiyo hedge. Amia don't destroy the hedge. Yes. When you are building a hedge you may have your seat. When you are building a hedge, what do you do? Me, I used to make fences. So I know them. You dig a hole, you put one here. Sinikweli. Then, unakanyanga, unataf, una, according to what you want it to be like, una put another post here. Another post here. In between, what do you put? And those wires have two, two thorns. If you put the post and put the wire without those two thorns, the fence will be accessible by any animal you don't want to get in. You may be that kashonge, that that one. We need you because there are demons that will not get in. Uh, every, <laughs> I don't know whether you hear. Even your gossip and the way you fight us, we need it. <laughs> Come as you are. The heads must be complete. Usha yona kuna watu kanisa mission yao ni kukasirisha watu. Na kikukasirisha you learn patience. Ah, kama si hizo shonge, mimi singe kuwa patient. I have become a very patient pastor because of the bad wires. Makatuzaka. They are meant to prevent enemies from coming. But even me as the owner, as I try to cross over, they hurt me. But what is it teaching me? Patience, endurance, loving the unlovable. Kila mutu wako na nafasi kwa kanisa hii. Usipo kuja, hata kama wewe ni shonge, tutakutafuta. Ah, amaya tuta, na ugeo kwenye. Hata kama wewe ni Judas, bado tunakutaka kwa mahesam. Hakuna mutu wana kazi hapa. Amia jirani yako, uliza jirani yako kazi yako ni gani hapa. Mwabi hata kama ujui Ukienda tutakutafuta Eh mwache kutukasirikia Eh kwa sabi ya kuatafuta We have your zeal Because our work is to make sure your zeal And your desire is on top Ukiona hata mtu miandika kwa whatsapp page Use me amen tutakuchokosa Kwa nidi wangei Are you a spy 
Hata ukituma vitu si relevant utakuuliza? Sababu hatutaki watu wakufe moyo juu yako. Balas fe. The other one is errors and mistakes. Errors and mistakes. The enemy can make sure that your project will not be finished by sponsoring errors and mistakes. Those of you that have done buildings, you know that a mistake in the foundation can cost you all the resources you have invested in. If there is a time we have seen buildings falling down, it's within since August. I think we have seen over four buildings, five floors coming down. The problem most of the times is not with the, the, the walls. Most of the times the foundation is wrong. It can be so costly when you make a mistake at the foundation of your life or whichever side. I remember we were building somewhere and the engineer came and said that this wall is not straight. And when you look at the amount of cement and the concrete that has entered into this wall, you are rebuking the devil because it is all the profit. But the engineer said it is up to you that this wall has to go. And most businesses, most homes have been brought down because of costly mistakes. May the Lord give you a spirit of excellence. May the Lord give you a spirit of excellence. And most of these costly mistakes are either caused by human error, because we are human. We make mistakes. Or probably demonic manipulation. The devil can manipulate you to commit a mistake that is irreversible. Like the way he manipulated Eve. Eve talked to the serpent and she got manipulated. And to this day, we are paying for it. May the Lord deliver us. May the Lord deliver us. I say may the Lord deliver us. Amen. And finally, the enemy can raise injunctions. Or he can use laws of the land. He can use laws of men. He can use curses, proclamations to hinder the work. One of the laws that the enemy uses are generational curses. When there are generational curses in the home, you will notice that when you reach a particular place, you are unable to finish. Oh, I remember in our own home, I grew up when I was in class three. The house was being built. It had reached rental. Until I finished form four, the house could not move on. Until I was a grown-up, the house could not move on. But I remember from that day, the Lord laid a burden in my spirit. And I used to pray every day in that house. I, we used to gather with my sister and say, we are going to pray in this house. Because this house must be complete. What we did not know, that there was a law that was working. I will not say many details. But there was a law that was working. Because sometimes the enemy can use authorities in your life to stop what you're doing. A, an ignorant parent can cast their children and they will never move forward. Like the way Jacob cast all his children. And whenever Reuben was, Reuben could not multiply. There were few until Moses saw this wickedness. And he said, this law that is working against Reuben must be stopped. Because they have an inheritance, but they can't take it. Lift your voice and say, every generational burden. Every generational law that has stopped me from finishing what I started. In the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, be swallowed in this service. Say another pray for yourself. 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 Bwana asifiwe sana. My name is Reverend Ruth Wamoyo on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. All you need to do is just go to my page, like, and follow me. And to my YouTube channel, I'm Ruth Wamoyo. Just go there and hit the red subscribe button. You will receive the latest music, the sermons, the gorgeous woman show, Divine Encounter, and all the services, even lunch hour services. God bless you as you do that.